Well, howdy there. Welcome to Mower Mike's Garage. Yet yeah, I'm putting the gloves on because this video is about to get darté because we are reviewing the Cub Cadet flagship mower of the early 2000s, the Cub Cadet GT Heavy Duty, Heavy Heavy Duty GT2544. Now, this is a heavy duty lawnmower made in the early 2000s that everybody swears is the best lawnmower ever made on the planet because it's got this big motor, it's shaft driven. People do all sorts of crazy stuff with it. They put front end loaders, make tractors out of them. They just think they're, they're amazing. And I thought the same thing when I bought it a couple years ago. Since then, I've gone through, I spent so many hours trying to fix every single little part on this lawnmower. And gang, I got a mitt. So strap in. If you're wanting a positive Cub Cadet review, you came to the wrong channel because based on the bend on that drive shaft, this is not gonna be a positive Cub Cadet review. I wanted it to, gosh, I wanted it to, but I, I, I just can't. So first of all, let's start with the looks of this mower. This is one fugly dang mower. This is the ugliest mower I've seen in my life. You've got this gigantic 700 pound lawnmower. Yeah, I said 700 pounds. Now most of your mowers for this size are about four to 500 pounds. Cub Cadet decided to strap on some car parts. I mean, it's got like a car transmission on it. It's got a car starter on it. It's got this giant engine on it. I mean, everything is super heavy, which sounds cool. Until two things, until first of all, you look at the size of the deck. They put a 44 inch deck on a 700 pound lawnmower. I mean, it looks ridiculous. When you strap that deck on, I mean, the, the lawnmower itself looks bigger than the freaking deck. And then you got on it like, okay, okay. Well, maybe it's just overpowered. Surely it's comfortable. Then you slide onto this thing and then it's got this bouncy squeaky seat and it just wants to push you forward. Like it, it's just a very, odd you can't really lean back in the thing it's just an uncomfortable lawnmower um but everything is super super heavy on this thing all right so that's my views first of all it's an ugly heavy lawnmower <laughs> so next we're going to talk about some mechanical aspects of the old gt2544 so let's go ahead and look underneath the hood and uh take a look at this Kohler. all right now we are looking at the Kohler. 21 horse horizontal shaft engine on this lawnmower. This is actually the reason why I bought this lawnmower. I thought it was so cool that it's horizontal. And now most mowers you see, they're gonna have the crankshaft coming out the bottom, running a PTO, which runs a belt, which runs a hydrostatic gear transmission in the back. This one actually has the crankshaft coming off the rear and it bolts straight to a drive shaft, which runs a transmission in the rear. So it's a totally different setup than anything you're gonna see in a modern mower, which I thought was really, really cool, but it hasn't worked out too good. I can see I bought a brand new carburetor for it. I've been through the whole thing, uh, valves, the whole nine yards. Now these mowers, motors are known for leaking, and also they're known for head gasket issues. I can see right here, this one has a bad head gasket. So that's the reason why I put this k and air filter up here on the oil dipstick fill tube because I was getting so much back pressure out of it. Let's see if I can actually start her up and we'll show you what I'm talking about. Now everything is hot wired on this thing because I had tons of electrical issues. I, I just couldn't figure out. There's so many weird safety switches and crap going on in this lawnmower. But uh, let's crank her up. Um, also, the flywheel on the back has chipped. This mower only has 200 hours on it for some reason the actual gears on the flywheel, which the starter connects to, has chipped off. So, I mean, there's all sorts of issues with this mower. You gotta wait till she lines up. Come on, come on, connect, connect, there we go. <laughs> I don't know, but something totally just blew up on this thing. Wow. Um, well, she starts, that was a little scary. Something blew up behind here. I'm not sure what's going on exactly. Um, yeah, all right, I'm okay. So, <laughs> wow, that was wild. Uh, yeah, these engines are known to leak. They're known for back pressure. The starter is huge. They're starting issues. As you can see, I'm smelling something right now, so I'm not totally sure what happened. <laughs> all right, we're back for round two. I'm gonna try to start this engine again, as you see, I've got my full Cub Cadet safety gear on for engine starts, because you never know around a Cub Cadet, this whole damn thing could blow up. So what happened last time when I started it, 
the drive shaft coupling actually blew up live on air, causing that drive shaft to ram into every piece of plastic coming back into this mower, causing things to shatter. Since then, I have pulled out all the plastic. I think we're clear in the back end. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how this thing starts, and I'm gonna show you what happens when your crankcase gets pressurized. That means you're getting pressure from the cylinders either down through past the cylinder itself, around the piston rings, or is going through a head gasket, which I think this is the problem. So you're gonna see pressure come out of the oil dipstick tube, which is a classic uh, engine <laughs> problem sign. All right. Oh my gosh, I'm nervous. I really did not plan on this whole thing blowing up last time, so hopefully this goes a little better. All right, get contact. Contact, contact. Uh-oh. All right, see there? <laughs> Even that was a little hairy. I'm glad I have my safety gear on for that. That is the last time this motor is going to start. As you can see right there, I was trying to show you a little back pressure, but uh, yeah. Next, we're gonna crawl underneath this thing, and I'm gonna show you the whole drive system uh, cluster that is the Cub Cadet GT2544. <laughs> all right, gang, yep. That is the GT2544. She's just taking a little nap after all that excitement we had earlier. Now, what I've done, I flipped it on its side because I really think the best way to look at a lawnmower car or anything is to look underneath it and look at the running gear to really understand how it's built. So let's take a look at her. But before we look underneath her, I want to take a closer look at what happened earlier when everything blew up on me. So a little more analysis. What this is, this is your drive shaft and it's got these little rivets in it because these bushings here, little nylon bushings slide in these rivets and there's a coupler that slides in right there. Now what happens on these lawn mowers, which happened to me about 30 minutes ago, is these little bushings, they wear out because this engine has a tendency to vibrate very, very hard, especially at high RPMs. And when I rev it high, the engine vibrates, it blows up these bushings, it rattles in there, then this whole thing breaks out and when it breaks out, it starts wiggling around. Then it explodes the fan and all the plastic on the back end of this motor. So not only is this thing a piece of junk, it is also a little bit dangerous. And we're gonna look more at the drive shaft a little bit. Just wanna show you guys what we we're working with. Now, as you come around, I will give it props. It does have like four bumpers on the front, which I've never seen a lawnmower with bumpers. And also the steering on it is actually pretty good. It's very beefy and it's got a pretty cool thing here because it is draft shaft driven it only runs on one belt off the front of the motor motor and then that's what runs your deck so just a one belt thing here all right so going around the back <laughs> look at this thing i think this is the wildest thing ever you've got a gigantic transmission on it this is the rear diff i swear this looks like it's as big out as a truck differential and i really think this is what's driving the extra weight i can see we got a big old uh transmission oil filter on it now it does make it very easy to change, but I think this is just a horrible design because first of all, you're getting the vibration off the engine and there's no clutch or anything to absorb that vibration as it comes all the way down here and you've got this flimsy drive shaft that hooks directly into a coupler right there with those nylon bushings. And it just, it just doesn't work too good when you get any type of vibration or anything's off on this lawnmower, which is why I think they went to the hydrostatic gear transmissions because not only are lighter, but actually they run better and I would rather use a hydro gear transmission when you're using a lawnmower, or even towing stuff. You think about the, the track skid steers and everything, they're all hydro gear <laughs> transmissions. So just want to show you guys underneath it, some old technology, but it is kind of cool and unique how it's built. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to take this drive shaft out and show you guys what exactly happened to this old drive shaft. <laughs> all right, I swear this will be my final bitch about this lawnmower. I have to address the drive shaft up close because I believe this is a huge weak point of this whole lawnmower. So the way it works is that you've got this drive shaft, right? And at the end of it, you've got these little inlets here. And what happens is you put these little nylon bushings, slide over that inlet, and then right here is the coupler. This coupler bolts to the back of the engine or transmission. It's the same on both sides. You slide this thing in here with your little bushings like so. And that's what holds it. So you've got about seven bushings, eight bushings, slide it in here. And so you've got tons of torque on this, turning this against those bushings. And these bushings is what takes all the force. And what happens is either these bushings blow up, which happened to me, or this latest time what happens, this drive shaft is such a piece of junk. Look at that. 
the actual fins off the metal break off. And when those break off, you lose any type of traction. You get a few. And what's crazy is that's not a freak thing. Let's look at the other side. The other side has broken fins also. So that's just a common failure on both sides of this stupid thing. Now, what's really crazy is when you look at it, now both fins broke, right? But look at the curve of this thing. This thing is by no means straight. So I don't know if that's just the torque or if when it blew up, it twisted in there. But this drive shaft should not be bending like that. I think part of the problem is that it's so skinny and long that it just tends to bend. As you can see right here, it's pretty hollow just with these uh, things welded on the, the end of it. So, all right. <laughs> That's my last complaint. Now let's talk about what we are going to do with said lawnmower. I'm going to load it up and we're going to try to find a buyer for her. All right, gang. Well, I'm excited because I think we actually found a buyer for the old Cub Cadet GT2544. I talked to my buddy Luis down in Lake Worth and he is all about it. I was like, dude, she doesn't move too good. She's very, very fat, slow, and she's ugly, and she's old. Luis is like, brother, that's my type. And I was like, all right, man, I guess it's a cultural thing, but I'm not gonna hate on Luis, so I'm gonna bring her to you. Um, I was like, hey, man, you mind if I just steal a few good parts off her? It's got a sweet seat, a couple of the wheels. He's like, dude, take all that rubber crap off. Just bring me that big old booty and uh, we're gonna make a deal. So we've got her strapped in. I'm gonna take you to Luis's shop and we're gonna drop her off, show you what we're gonna do with her. So stay tuned. All right, here we are at Luis's place. It's a bit of a outdoor place. Look at that tractor. That's like a thousand pound magnet right there. Holy cow. It's coming over for the old cubby. <laughs> Let's see you take it. There we go. Really, this is really the best thing to do with the cup you did. As you can see, recycling, good metal. Come on, scoop her up. Ah, oh, I was hoping he'd lift it. You see, there's so much plastic up top, she's having trouble. There we go, get good stick. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> there she goes. Old Cub Cadet is done and done. <laughs> Alright gang, just want to show you the final resting place of the Old Cub Cadet. Well deserved. She had 200 hours on her and that's all they're rated for apparently. But let's look a little deeper. There's all sorts of other yard equipment up in here. What do we got? We got an old Craftsman there. All sorts of cool junk. Look at that. Hulan. Yep. It is definitely where it belongs. Over here we got an old Troy built. That's kind of cool. As you can see here, this is definitely an amateur. Left good tires on it, good seat. You always take that off first. So, again, gang, don't be scared of the scrapyard. Oh, the freedom. Yes, the Cub Cadet is finally gone. I've been working on that piece of junk for two years, and I can't tell you what a relief is to have that Cub Cadet gone. Not only that Cub Cadet gone, but this is the first time in like five years. I don't have a broke down Cub Cadet in my shop. I don't have a broke down Cub Cadet in my yard, and it feels so good and I just hope they don't find their way back to my shop but I'm sure they will so a little piece of advice from mower Mike I have flipped a lot of lawnmowers in my days and sometimes usually about one out of ten lawnmowers once you fix the fuel and the valves and the air and all this stuff and they still don't work just cut the cord and get rid of them the best thing to do is take them to the scrap yard just make sure to drain all the fluids out and just be done with them because really if they're one of these crappier brands like Cup Cadet number one maybe a Murray maybe a Poulon real piece of junk just be done with them because they're not worth working on but if you have something cool let's say you got something cool like this like a Honda 1986 three-wheeler 250 ES big red now something like this is worth working on I've had this sucker in my shop for about three years and there will be some future videos coming up on this sucker so with that, I hope y'all enjoyed it. And for all you folks who left all the I love Cub Cadets, Cub Cadets are the best thing in the world all for my last video, y'all all have one thing in common. All your Cub Cadets were made within the five years, last five years. And I have to tell you, I don't review mowers within the last five years because I review mowers that people can actually afford. Used mowers is what I'm talking about. 
and I don't care about your XT1 and all your crap. I'm saying used cup cadets are absolutely pieces of junk, and I'm standing by that. And you leave me all the negative comments you want, but whatever. I'm gonna go back and uh, start working on hopefully on some John Deere's. I got a Gravely in the mix. So with that, Marmite's out, and uh, stay tuned for the next round. We'll have some more fun. See ya.